how did plix happen and how did you guys reach where you guys are me specifically also there was like if i wanted to buy protein i had to go buy like a, a brand which was like you know uh, focusing more on bodybuilders right so i was very intimidating as a consumer me and you wouldn't most probably want to consume it at that point of time that thesis is what i look to start a plant based nutrition company uh, which was well catered towards what do you call uh, millennials very non intimidating clean plant based and we were one of the first guys to launch plant based protein in india while the decision to uh, get marico on board was a very uh, thought out one it was also something which uh, we spent a lot of time understanding and deciding whether to go forward or not while they're a great partner to be with uh, i thought my life will radically change right uh, with marico coming in in terms of uh, what do you call the wealth creation uh the business being recognized by a formal fmcg and but i don't think anything is changed <laughs> life is as is <laughs> i will actually ask uh, multiplication questions to guys who i'm interviewing if they are comfortable maths or not and everything is translated to numbers right you tell me if anything goes wrong numbers are able to identify it uh your employees employees us do feeling that i think that's a conversation you should have with your founder yeah i feel your micromanaging and i was given that feedback for my family so it was something which was like people were just unheard of like aisa bhi hota hai yaar Like I remember, I'll just tell you a very coincident incident. My Nana Ji, who's very successful as a businessman, the biggest and best part about launching a D two C brand is you don't require a lot of capital to do it. Invent inventing can be very light, right? You don't need the distribution of giants, right? Uh, you can launch just on your website. You don't need to have multi crore advertising budgets like TV to do it. You can spend ten thousand rupees a day and create awareness, try and test and learn, right? So what you don't realize, and this is what I think is should come out, is that. the higher valuation you raise i think you need to when you have capital right be careful of how you spend it because that just because today there is money in the bank there'll be a point of time it there won't be money in the bank after some time right if you keep burning my guest for today's episode is rishab he's one of the co-founder of plix which is a d2c nutraceutical uh, brand uh, welcome rishab to game room thanks for taking out time hey swati pleasure to be uh, looking forward to this conversation thank you uh to begin with uh, would love to understand your journey from start up till uh, now how did plix happened and how did you guys reach where you guys are so it's um, it's not a very long journey <laughs> it's a little short one but it's quite uh, different and honestly where we are today i think 3 uh, and a half 4 years back i don't think so i had any thought process of building the brand today and you know building like a, such a fantastic good consumer business like i had started with a very small goal the goal was to do one order a day i'm not joking a 2000 rupee order <laughs> do like 60000 at like maybe 50% gross margin take home 30 40000 that's the plan right uh is what i started with uh, so i come from a very traditional background my parents run traditional family businesses everyone in my ecosystem runs traditional family businesses no one's really done the professional journey so i had no experience in corporate life and uh, Uh, i had just had one two years of experience before i started off and so all of this was very new to me and what i had realized and what i wanted to do was honestly like uh, what i'd seen based on trends so i was a management consultant and i had looked at trends to understand what's working what's not working lastly and i saw that you know health is being looked at at the forefront and specifically with brands like muscle blaze uh, gnc and cult doing very well in health right uh, so nutrition was honestly doing really well and but most of these brands were brands like muscle blaze gnc were positioned towards bodybuilding right and i could see that a lot of youth and the new uh, what do you call gen z etc young millennials specifically were moving towards fitness with cult doing so well right and not the bodybuilding type of fitness but just to stay fit and healthy and we realized at that point of time 3 4 years back there was no brand catering to them most of these and me specifically also there was like if i wanted to buy protein i had to go buy like a brand which was like you know uh focusing more on bodybuilders right so i was very intimidating as a consumer me and you wouldn't most probably want to consume it at that point of time uh so that's when i realized that there is a huge gap there right and there is no clean natural non intimidating uh consumer brand talking about protein and wellness right and in the us we saw that this was doing fairly well where brands like vega etc done well so around that thesis is what i look to start a plant based nutrition company uh, which was well catered towards what do you call uh, millennials very non intimidating clean plant based and we were one of the first guys to launch plant based protein in india and that did fairly well 
so that's how i started the journey um uh, honestly it wasn't where i'm i'm also not from this field honestly i'm a management consultant and i went and met an r&d guy i worked with him for 6 months to what we call build out a formula which is good figured out sourcing it took a lot of time in the initial months and that's how i started off and after we launched i think we started doing pretty well on amazon and the business built slowly and slowly and we started doing decent numbers like around 30 lakhs a month within 6 to 8 months of launch and i was quite surprised wow. there ki matlab a brand uh, a business with like very little resources but because the product was new innovative and people were looking for it right uh without much marketing also the product really picked up uh and that's how my initial journey started out and then i think uh, i think covid hit health and awareness took a forefront even further and then we launched more products in like racv or vitamin c for essence which got a lot of consumer again because we are solving real problems so our hero today for us is our apple side of vinegar for essence not the product we launched which solves the real problem if you had acv right it's a very boring liquid which smells awful it's like vinegar like you do close it hose and have it like that right so so mazai nahi hai so we solved the real problem where we gave consumers taste made the product much more fancy convenient it's a small sleek tube uh, which you can put in your pocket have it wherever you go great replacement for colas and that took the market by storm and we like built we quickly scaled to doing like maybe a 100 crore business in like another one one and a half year because of the customer love we got and then I think sometime before we raised these hundred crores, we raised capital, and then three years later, I think Marico loved the growth of the brand, loved what we were building, and especially they wanted something in the nutrition space, right, which was appealing to me. And then they, and we connected with them and took this journey even further. How has life, uh, you know, changed for you pre Marico and pro post Marico? <laughs> so you know, I'll be honest, and uh, while the decision to uh, get Marico on board was a very uh thought out one it was also something which uh we spent a lot of time understanding and deciding whether to go forward or not while they're a great partner to be with uh i thought my life will radically change right um uh, with marico coming in in terms of uh, what do you call the wealth creation uh the business being recognized by a formal fmcg and but i don't think anything has changed <laughs> life is as is <laughs> uh so before and after i think it is the same but yes there are certain key highlights right you are now acknowledged very well by friends and families and by your d2c peers because of the landmark exit we've been able to deliver right? i think at that point of time we were one of the biggest d2c exits which happened and very sh- quick short of time for me and my co-founder both right and like i think my lifestyle has not changed but yes today i think uh, once something like this happens right where a major fncg player recognizes you right i think people really start looking up to you and uh want to talk to you meet you take your advice take your perspective on things uh which is something which has changed i think apart from that uh what do you call i don't think anything else has changed i it's the same life i had work maybe 14 hours a day i'm obsessed with building the business right and yeah so that's it like you know like nothing has changed but yes uh you know you guys have had the most aspirational uh, exit which any d2c founder can think of in the time span that you have really had so what is it that you think both of you as co-founders have cracked uh, you know which led to this fast track uh, exit uh so i'll tell you right uh, me and akash both um don't have any corporate experience or and uh, we've come from very traditional businesses both our fathers have built which have been purely built on profit and that's the fundamental we understand right your business strong fundamentals pe banta hai good unit economics pe banta hai unit economics to be fancy d2c word kar raha but business profit pe banta hai right and unless your basics are not correct you will not be able to do it and uh, we've always we should look at most traditional family businesses they are run by the the ceo majorly and who's done a lot of work right uh, it's not like he has a fancy team which is there or that comes secondary right so i think me and akash both right uh, uh, were very clear ki we have to build a business from ground up get our fundamentals right learn everything do everything hands on right and uh, understand it and then scale it up so i think those were couple of the things so what's worked for us majorly is uh, one is i think we solved a clear problem which is there in the space where people were looking for clean natural tasty nutrition right they didn't want to have boring pills uh so what we came to know from a call is when you consume like multivitamins or any product which is in a form of a pill 
right? You feel you're unhealthy, right? You don't want to consume it every day, right? While this is like you're having a great fizzy drink, you want to consume it. It's cool. You'll want to talk to your friends about it. It's shareable on Instagram. It's very millennial Gen Z focused. So that does well in terms of a product market fit. Yes, we got that right, right? Uh, and we also it took some time to get to the right product, right? We launched a plant based protein which had its zero to one journey great, right? Did thirty lakhs a day, but didn't scale further. So when we focused to spoke to a consumer to understand what they you know, launched a vitamin C F O S since launched the A C V and A C V is where we saw real product market fit right and then we doubled down on it that's the first second is I think what worked for us is we are very hands on founders right uh, and uh, we understood basic business fundamentals and doubled down on it so uh, as founders and D two C brand owners we realized very soon that if you don't build the right flywheel and uh, like flywheel in the sense the right marketing structure to uh, do a pilot with and should work at strong unit economics only then it'll work right and if you is what i mean uh, and unless until you do something like where you're hoping that chalo you're burning money today and acquiring a customer and maybe over a period of one year i will become profitable in acquiring that new customer right we would not start scaling the model vendor burning money we would keep testing 100 creative multiple things to make sure that the customer acquisition is happening at a profitable level right that's what we learned and once we reach that profit in number we would then 10x on that uh, flywheel or that marketing angle which we built upon so we kept reiterating till we got to the right flywheel and then we scaled up that's the second thing and what we also did i think is for me and akash was the third thing which worked for us is very strong obsession with numbers and data right uh, i don't think a business can be built without that Today, me and Akash compiling have at least hundred plus or two hundred plus dashboards, which we look at and so build daily, wow. right? To understand everything. A uh, very famous saying, which is there, which we all use, is "I think no English, only maths." Right. So mm-hmm. I will actually ask uh, multiplication questions to guys who I'm interviewing if they're comfortable with maths or not, and everything is translated to numbers, right? You tell me if anything goes wrong, numbers are able to identify it. and one key key takeaway is we built something which is like a daily pnl for us uh that works wonders so every day we know whether we are profitable or not like a strong same shopkeeper right who rose raat ko hisab karega ki aaj maine kitna business kiya aap maine kitna paise kamaye same thing is what we do aaj maine 100 rupaye ka sale kiya mera 30 rupaye marketing mein laga aaj maine 20 rupaye ka profit kamaya without with and without my opex so every day we knew that and the day we were burning money we would change the strategy see something's gone wrong the day we are doing profitable we would double click on it i think these couple of things is what uh, we did i feel right uh, also i think uh, being at the right place at the right time in terms of notation as an industry did well and that's what worked for us to build a strong business in like 3 years with very less capital so you think uh, that the jab aap fund raising karne jaate ho to 4 5 10 saal ki projections hoti so you think those are all fictions and founders should actually live by the day and decide their strategy yeah yeah i don't day. agree yeah. i fundamentally <laughs> believe i think even at some level vcs don't believe it and i don't even believe any uh, what you call big conglomerate believes it i don't think so right i think those numbers are just uh, there to give you maybe satisfaction but they also know and in fact like one of my vcs right when i presented a one year plan he said ye ban karo yaar i'm not joking You are like yeah, let's look at three months. Right? Three months is a realistic window what you can look at and then you can plan for. One year plans are all just good for uh, what do you call it? submitting and keeping hygiene, but they don't make sense. Uh, and I don't think so. It's good to understand vision of a founder, yes. And I'm sure that's what people also will look at it as, right? When they ask you, they just want to understand what your vision is. But as a startup, right? Your business is change in three months. I have seen my business go from thirty percent a bit up negative to ten percent a bit up positive within four months. and business is doubling down in terms of revenue so so i think uh, at least at a startup scale right with the way at least specifically with internet and virality and content your business can take a massive change one video goes viral can give you like 30 40 lakhs of revenue right which goes viral and we seen that happen in our businesses one great ad gets your cac down by 50% so i think 3 months is a good enough window unless your I think a scaled up business. I think at the startup journey, the zero to one, one to ten, before you are like hitting hundred, one fifty crores. I think you should live day by day and maybe look at a three month plan. Right, that's what I believe in. So you also spoke about the fact that you know you and your co-founder, both of you are very hands on. Uh, you know, as a founder, so we hire a lot for this ecosystem, and a lot of time, one complaint that you know uh, CXO or the employees have is that founders themselves are you know so hands on that. while we are there we are just you know there there is a lot of micromanagement or the control just lies you know with the founder so at what stage you should uh, 
at what stage founders should feel that look it is time for us not to be so hands on or it is time for us to you know probably hand over the baton to someone else so i'll tell you i have gone through this issue myself <laughs> I'm so hands on. Everyone is complaining to me. Yeah, you don't let us do only anything. Yeah, before we can even escalate the problem, you have already said it. Yeah, we come to office at 11 a.m. You know, I'm messaging group. Yeah, this is fatta hua hai. Yeah, right. So I I absolutely relate to it. And in fact, I have also learned the hard way. Uh, where what do you call? I was extremely hands on, right? And uh, my team people under me were struggling, right? And they always give me the feedback. Yeah, you are micromanaging too much, uh, right? and at some level i agreed with them some level i don't agree with them uh the level which i don't agree with them is the one of the reasons why i usually have to micromanage is the person who is building it i don't have enough faith in him because he's not proven it to me right that's where i come from uh at some places that does happen right? and i have seen that the moment i have confidence in a guy right he's delivering he's smashing it then i step back at absolutely then i'll do like one month review me things right it's only usually founders will want to micromanage only when what do you call uh they don't believe that this guy would be able to do the right job that's where i think someone needs to understand that he needs to also give the founder 3 months and like let him like while he's micromanaging show the founder that in 3 months the boss i can do this right uh at that level is where uh i think what do you call you should understand and that's where in i had a little bit of this thing ki i would micromanage a lot but slowly i realized and i started giving my team also a little bit of bandwidth and if they were able to deliver then i would step back uh so it's a chicken and egg situation you will also be there but yeah i think uh, at early stages founders will micromanage as the business scales they'll have 100 things and they will start serving back i don't no micromanage at all uh, but i would do that a lot in the past so it's more of chicken and egg is what i would say you would have to figure it out but yeah i, I think if uh, your employees employees are do feeling that i think that's a conversation you should have with your founder ki yeah, i feel you're micromanaging and i was given that feedback so then i also shared my concerns ki i don't think you're doing it so he said then we built a scenario where he said give me 2 weeks i will do it and we looked at numbers in terms of review meetings after 2 weeks if you are able to deliver i would step back more so that's how i solved the problem but yes this is a big problem hands on founders micromanage too much it's there i've gone through it i've heard the feedback and i've slowly it's taken around a year or two but now i've given back now my team will not say that so uh, is there a specific instance or incidents that happened uh, you know which made you realize this uh, did you lose uh, you know any any employee who you think was a great asset because of uh, you know probably you being a little more hands on aisa kuch specific hua tha or it was just a gradual learning nay i think i've definitely lost a lot of employees over the due course of run because of uh, the culture at plex and all and it's been a learning process and i think it's for every founder right you will only make mistakes to learn uh whether is a great resource or not i'll not like to comment i think he was a good resource but fine we lost him we learned from mistakes and we did better right uh, but yes this has happened and i think it will happen uh the the reason i learned and i learned is why i learned is because my teammates and my cx was gave me the feedback and over a due course of time i was able to implement it and learn from it ये मैर जब मैरिको का एग्जिट हुआ था तो अभी कोई भी डी टू सी स्टार्टअप यू नो जब अभी चालू कर रहा होगा तो उनको लगता होगी वाह मतलब फ्लिक्स वालों ने तो मचा दी है मतलब वी वुड वांट टू बी देयर यू नो वन डे नाउ अब आपने ऑलरेडी मचा दिया है आफ्टर दैट यू हैव सीन द एग्जिट सो व्हाट डिड इट फील एट अ ह्यूमन यू नो आई जस्ट डोंट बिलीव इट यार आई थिंक आई हैड पिंच माय सेल्फ यार बिकॉज़ वी आर आई विल बी ऑनेस्ट कम फ्रॉम अ वेरी सिंपल फैमिली दीस नंबर्स आर आल्सो लाइक I don't believe in three years the business can be valued over five hundred plus crores, right? It's shocking, right? With the amount of capital we put in and these numbers, just for me also are honestly unbelievable. That, right? and finally, you know, while I think at VC your business does get valued, but it's not wealth creation because they're putting money into the business and you are not making money, right? At this point of time, what's happening is you are yourself uh, creating wealth for yourself. You're creating wealth for your what do you call esop holders you're creating wealth for the guys who already invested and have equity in your company right so it was phenomenal like um it's uh, what do you call i think it was i honestly was like shocked right even today i think while this entire process took one year until it didn't happen um i was also like wow this does happen like and it's just been 3 years and for my family so it was something which was like people were just unheard of like aisa bhi hota hai yaar like i remember i'll just tell you very coincident instance my nana ji who's very successful as a businessman phenomenal businessman built a good business and like his his dad is taken down he yet doesn't understand my business he is like ye business mein koi asset nahi hai tumne ek rent nahi hai matlab koi property nahi hai tumne koi ip nahi hai 
तुम किसके लिए इतना पैसा मिल रहा है तुम्हें यार तो आप तो प्रॉफिट कर रहे हो एट दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम राइट तुम यूर ब्रेक इन इवन कैसे कोई इतना बिजनेस को वैल्यू कर रहा है इवन टुडे ही रिफ्यूज टू अंडरस्टैंड एंड इज अ क्योर धंधा गाय राइट बट नहीं समझ में आता है एंड सो इट्स इट इज वेरी डिफरेंट एंड इट्स वेरी अनरियलिस्टिक बट येस आई थिंक सच नंबर विल बिकम अ नॉर्म एज founders start building new consumer businesses which actually create value have a significant differentials i think conglomerates and pure strong fmcg players will look at this and i think they are very happy so i i can say for this for myself that i think marico is very happy building uh, their d2c arm and they take great pride to say that i think they are building the most profitable digital in playbook today what next uh, what is the journey that you and akash are looking for the next you know 3 to 5 years nahi yaar yahi karna hai abhi bhi so me and akash will yet build this business uh going forward and build it the right way uh make plix a much more household name uh, parachute is there in one in every three households today that's a number we would want plix to be at uh, leverage marico's distribution build a strong retail brand build more customer love maybe take acv all across the world is what our plan is and build a strong so we are going to be doing this for the next couple of years maybe after that once uh, what do you call uh, we exit the business i think uh, we'll build something else but it's too early to say yeah now so i'll be honest right planning for something 3 4 years 5 years down the line does not make sense today because i believe the world changes in 6 months one year right what is a problem today might not be a problem one year later what what do you call and if you also what happens is when you start solving a business problem it has to be at the right time and right place if i had looked to launch a digital business 10 years back where nutrition was not the forefront i could have all had the right products the right team the right strategy but it wasn't the right time right so 3 years back when the time was right and we started right that it's a right place right time so it matters so i think that's the way to look at it 3 uh, 4 years later we'll see what's doing well and we'll figure out what to do and as a consumer if i consume a plant based nutrition versus uh, a nutrition which is not plant based how how is it beneficial for my health so it depends on what product you're consuming and what you're looking to do and what your outputs right the focus what we try to give our consumers is when you're consuming something plant based you are actually consu- what we try to do is we use actual real ingredients in our products we will not put synthetics which is something they are chemically derived ingredients right so apple cider vinegar has actually got pure plant based apple cider vinegar liquid which is freeze dried and made into process and given to you uh we use no added colors we will not use preservatives in our products most of them uh right uh, no artificial flavors in some of them some will use stevia based on requirements of consumers so you're definitely getting the goodness at that level right and you can be rest assured that A, 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 an organization which is focusing to give you clean plant based nutrition will what do you call will put your needs and will focus on giving you the maximum goodness of a product which they can without compromising much on taste uh, yes and this can help you in multiple ways uh, we've got today products for weight management for what do you call uh, stress for immunity for just building protein uh, so it depends on distinct to distinct on problem to problem So, do you guys manufacture your own product, or you have a manufacturing? So, what we have is we have our own R and D team and a product team who will create the concepts, work with third party manufacturers to create the product, and then we'll give them the contract to build out the product once it's been finalized. So, we don't have our own manufacturing uh, at this point of time. So, see, look, uh, I think what what also worked for you guys is that you started at the right time when this industry was also picking up. नाउ अगर किसी डी टू सी अगर किसी यंग पर्सन को डी टू सी यू नो ब्रांड चालू करना है सो वॉट डू यू थिंक आर थ्री फोर यू नो ट्रेंड्स और इंडस्ट्री विच कैन काइंड ऑफ सिग्निफिकेंटली पिक अप सो आई थिंक आई थिंक देर इज येट मल्टीपल अपॉर्चुनिटीज इन द डी टू सी स्पेस द द बिगेस्ट एंड बेस्ट पार्ट अबाउट लॉन्चिंग अ डी टू सी ब्रांड इज यू डोंट रिक्वायर लॉट ऑफ कैपिटल टू डू इट इन्वेंट इन्वेंटी कैन बी वेरी लाइट राइट यू डोंट नीड द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ जॉइंट्स राइट यू कैन लॉन्च जस्ट ऑन योर वेबसाइट you don't need to have multi crore advertising budgets like tv to do it you can spend 10000 rupees a day and create awareness try and test and learn right so d to c is a great place to start off it um uh, and i think it's possible a uh, couple of key segments which i think are very interesting today right one i believe um, what do you call launching a jewelry business is something which is high aov uh good profit margin lab and grown diamond lab grown diamond ek bahut sexy segment <laughs> yeah. hai Uh, I think even jewelry. I think uh, even silver. I think is a very. Jiva, Jiva kind of a thing. I am. Yeah, could be. I yeah. think. But yeah, I think even uh, silver jewelry will do well. Lab grown diamonds. Because what I believe is, 
See, to build a business online and start off, right, you need to have high AOVs. And customers today are willing to pay even 5,000, 10,000, 15,000 or 20,000 to a brand if they are assured that they will, their money is safe, right? And you can build social proof to ensure that is done. So that's there, right? And high gross margins are also there in this business, right? So you have enough advertising money to create awareness. I think that's one. Second, I think uh, if you look at Gen Z, right? And I'll just talk about yesterday's Ed Sheeran concert, right? Uh, I s and the ticket, a normal general entry ticket cost it 7,500. And I could see majorly Gen Z and millennials, right? So what I can see is people of the age group of 18 to 24 having 8,000 rupees to spend on what do you call things they're passionate about, right? Style or like a concert. So what I think is if you build a brand focusing on Gen Z, right? Because they have also what is happening is the entire economy is growing. These guys are getting jobs. Gen Z's will work in digital agencies, etc. They make money and they are okay to spend the entire money. So they will spend on things they find inspirational. So you build a business related to fashion. I think sneaker businesses are really picking up. I think those are a very interesting segment to cap rate. I think um, disposable income is increasing. And so if you build to these niches where people are okay to spend, right? Uh, I think they'll do well. That's what I saw. Right? I was shocked. 7,500. If I had of 20, if someone had told me to pay, I would have to like, no way. I wouldn't have done it. I'll be honest. I don't think I should make all the 7,500 to do it. Pocket money is 3,000 rupees. I have to save it for concert. Ke to, but people are doing it now, right? And I saw a lot of young guys. It wasn't like a concert where I saw people of the age group of 30 to 50, right? So I think if that's the spending power today India has, right? So they will spend as you solve their problem. So I think more, I think on fashion, yes, sneakers, yes, building a business focusing towards Gen Z because you can appeal to them with content, right? Today, your big FMCG players which have built solid businesses on retail, that's not where a Gen Z is going to go. So that's your moat. And I think, I think I spoke on lab grown diamond. I think that's a very interesting segment. These are two verticals, I believe, which will do well. And third, I think is anything which is better for you, right? Um, could be in health, could be in food, could be in clothing, could be in laundry. And I know a lot of brands are coming up today. I think that will do well. And I think personal care is the biggest. While there are 5,000 brands today in personal care, I think there is room for more 1,000 brands, right? Uh, as long as you're innovative and solving a problem, I think this personal care beauty category is very sexy. So that's my thesis on what's going to be doing it well going forward. So apart from... Uh you know, your your company, you know, you would have seen the journey of many D2C players who have come, grown big, you know, come, shut shop. So if you have to name, you know, one or two consumer brands or D2C platform, which you think, you you really admire, you feel that, you know, they have done a lot of Who are those, you know, platforms that would stand out? So one founder who I think, and one brand who I think has done a phenomenal job, right, I think is Mahmoud. Uh, I think definitely right time, right place, yes. But he's shown that he's built a flywheel to build consumer brands and apart from Mama Earth, right he's shown success with Dr. Shades he's shown success with Damako he's shown success with his uh, there's one more brand here Aqualogica right so once it shows that if you got the right flywheel in place today of how to build a consumer business you can replicate it and he's done like three businesses more right in the same and he's done well so I think I like Mama Earth for the brand they built they built it efficiently it's not a massive cash burn model their Mahmoud business is profitable. I think Demago is hitting profitability already, right? And they're all like the 100 crore plus brands today, right? Uh, it's not easy to do it. At the space he's done, it is good. And uh, I love the fact that I think the public markets have accepted him well and he's growing month on month also. And numbers look great, yeah? I think he's in towards profitability. He hit profitability last quarter also, I think. So I admire that business and I learn from them. Like I've been hearing great things. There were a lot of focus on digital testing and learning, leveraging influencers, solving for Bharat, India, right? So I think that's a brand I really like. And what they've done is something which I also learned from and I will keep learning. So, uh, Rishabh, you know, there is a lot of, uh, you know, media coverage and write-up in terms of uh, founders have achieved, the valuations, the amount of money that they have raised, you know, the way their brand has, you know, done well and there is you know on other side there is a lot of media coverage in terms of founder bashing so just as a founder what do you think uh, is something which has not been covered you know something probably which would be going deep down between the co-founders which needs to come in uh, uh, you know media that look this is also a journey that founders go through 
<clears throat> so I'll tell you two, three things then, which I think are also very dear to me and something I have experienced myself is, uh, in India specifically, what I've seen is that uh, founders or I think the media glorifies uh, fundraising a lot, right? And actually, the way it's written is like, it's like larger than life, right? That, oh my God, 2,000 crore valuation, 6,000 crore valuation or whatever X valuation, right? And it's it's given larger than life appeal, right? Um, and funding is really glorified uh, to another level that what's become is now every new founder thinks that, you know, raising capital and at big valuations, right, is the only way to go. What you don't realize, and this is what I think is, should come out, is that the higher valuation you raise, the bigger you have to work to give an exit, right? So you should be very mindful of the fact that and do not over-promise someone and don't raise just because there is FOMO in the market today and there are five uh, venture capital brands bidding to get your brand. Don't raise at a valuation which is not fair because eventually, until you don't give a return, nor will the founder make money, nor will you make money, right? So that's where I want to just highlight that this is something which I think also a lot of us now talk about, right? But I don't think it comes out in the open. And a lot of new founders then think that the only what the only commitment and the only goal they have to do is raise money at a high valuation. I don't think that should be the focus. The focus and what should be glorified more is brands might not be raising at fancy valuations, right? But doing strong business, be building a profitable business. Maybe they're growing 20% month on month, right? Um, but they're building a 20% year on year, not month on month. I mean, 20% on year is great. Right? That's what should be also highlighted. I think that's is missed. A profitable businesses uh, with strong fundamentals, uh, are not, I think, highlighted a lot, but brands sometimes uh, raising a lot of capital, but having huge burns are sometimes glorified. And that's what then the part, other, and it's fine. I think some brands do raise and burn money to eventually become profitable as a larger game they're playing. Like I think marketplace brands, tech companies need that. But I think small consumer businesses, I don't think so work on that model. You can be profitable from day one. You don't require, specifically when you're building a D2C business, right? So it depends on, I think, brand to brand, but... What I want to say is, I think not only funding, but even profitable businesses should be glorified a lot because just raising on valuations does not make sense. In fact, I'll tell you personally, me and Akash were okay to even not raise at the highest valuation uh, and maybe lesser because we knew if we raise at such valuation, um, giving an exit will become difficult at one point of time, right? So we need to be, uh, what do you call, very clear in that thought process and understand care. If today I raise at a thousand crore, can I give this investor a four thousand crore exit? Right. If I not, then maybe I should raise less money also and raise at a lesser valuation. It's very important to understand this because what happens is even for VCs, right? They have a lot of deployment pressure, is what I believe, right? So they might be okay, even though maybe what do you call? They're seeing a good business today, and you pitch them like based on your market size that you know this can become four thousand crore business, and based on that they might even write at you a hundred crore check, right? But take, for example, you in your deep dive know that this is not going to be more than 15 grand crore business and you don't need more than 30, 40 crores. Don't raise it because it'll come back to back to, back to bite you because once you've raised, there's no way going back. I don't know how many founders would think about uh, exit at the time of, you know, raising money because when you're raising money, you're firefighting a lot of different problems and not thinking about that or giving that exit to investor. No, yeah, every time, I, think, I don't agree with that. I'll be honest. Every time you raise capital, I think... You have to clearly think that, boss, if I'm getting a partner on board, how am I going to give him an exit? If you don't think that, right, then it's a bigger problem because then you're, then like it doesn't make sense, right? Today, someone is putting, uh, taking a bet on you, hoping he's making, going to make 3x, 4x returns, right? So at some level, you have to have that clear sight. Ki either it can be, it can be like a secondary also done by what do you call uh, raising another round because you're going to grow so well. But I think whenever you raise capital, you should very clearly understand that, boss, Meko, I have to give my partner an exit. And that's why I'm only getting on board. If I, because that's how we see things, right? They have a five year, 10 year, uh, what do you call, uh, fund cycle. So they need an exit within five years or 10 years. That becomes a bigger problem for them. So what are the biggest mistakes founders have done with the money that they have, uh, you know, uh, raised? <laughs> it depends from founder <laughs> to founder. Yeah? I think everyone will have different mistakes and different lines, but... Um, what I would, and I've also been through this a bit is, uh, just because you raise capital, right? And you have money in the bank, uh, don't just go out and spend it, hoping that things will become better, right? Is something which we've done at some level and that never happens. 
वट एम टू से इज़ कि यार तुम्हें लग रहा है कि यार ये कैंपेन करने से यू थिंक ये एक करोड़ खर्चा करने से यू मे बी गेट टू एक्स रो एस होपिंग एंड यू हैव टू पुट द वन करोड़ आई वुडन डू डैट यू रैद स्पेंड फाइव एक्स फर्स्ट यू सी इफ यू गेट थ्री एक्स ऑन दैट इफ दैट वर्क दैन मे बी यू से कैल डिप्लॉय वन करोड़ राइट टेस्ट एंड लर्न इंस्टेड ऑफ दिस डिप्लॉइंग ऑल द कैपिटल होपिंग थिंग्स विल वर्क आउट दैट्स वन थिंग एंड सेकेंड इज आई थिंक यू नीड टू वेन यू हैव कैपिटल राइट बी केयरफुल ऑफ हाउ यू स्पेंड इट बिकॉज दैट जस्ट बिकॉज टूडे देर इज मनी इन द बैंक देर बी अ पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम एट दे वोट बी मनी इन द बैंक आफ्टर सम टाइम राइट इफ यू कीप बर्निंग सो बिल्ड अ स्ट्रॉग फंडामेंटल बिजनेस जिस एंड डिप्लॉय द कैपिटल वाइजली राइट ऑन थिंग विच विल हेल्प यू इन द लॉन्ग टर्म इन्वेस्ट इन टीम इन्वेस्ट इन्वेस्ट इन बॉडी कॉल द राइट टीम इन्वेस्ट इन अ स्ट्रॉग प्रोडक्ट आई वुड से इज बी वेरी वाइज इन जिस ब्लोइंग ऑफ द कैपिटल ऑन ब्रांड बिल्डिंग or uh, something which uh, i think because what happens is what and the thing is with brand building is it's an intangible asset right you would everyone will tell you in the market that you cannot track ro as on brand building to tum 20 crore bhi kharcha kar lo you can't expect 40 crore it's money gone which will build over a period of 5 years 10 years but boss today if you raise 30 40 crores you spend 20 crores on brand building and you're burning one crore month your brand will not last more than 12 months right so be careful kyar If you're spending twenty crores, where the realization will, and you keep spending twenty crores for five years, and then the realization will come ten years later. But if your business will not last that long because of other things. So be careful on how you spend your capital. Uh, it's something which I would tell most founders: don't in, invest it wisely. In fact, what I would say is, in the early stages of business, right, only invest your capital where you see clear incremental revenue coming in. Otherwise, don't. And that's the principle. I think Plix has followed that principle till now, right? If I'm deploying. Rupee one, I have to get two x, and it has to be trackable. It doesn't have to be directly trackable, but overall, I should see that incremental come in. If it doesn't come in, I will not believe it, and I will not spend then ten rupees on it. So I will do a small test, see incremental, and that's how I do it. So this is my last, uh, you know, question for the segment. So we do lot of marketing hires. So सबसे पहला सवाल कैंडिडेट पूछते हैं कि मार्केटिंग बजट क्या है उनका मंथ ऑन मंथ बर्न कितना है मार्केटिंग में and you also mentioned कि आप लोग काफी cautious थे in terms of you know what you spend and what you get out of that. So आपने क्या डिफरेंटली किया है वेन इट कम्स टू ब्रांड बिल्डिंग यू नो विच हैज़ वर्क फॉर यू विच क्लियरली इज नॉट अ स्पेंड यू नो वे ऑफ ब्रांड बिल्डिंग या सो टेल यू कपल ऑफ थिंग्स यार इफ इफ माई मार्केटिंग हायर आस मी ना बर्न कितना पर क्या बजट दोगे आई विल नॉट हायर गायर ओनली यार सो एनी वेज राइट वट आई वुड से इज द राइट क्वेश्चन टू आस्क इज वट यू कॉल राइट और द राइट कॉन्वर्जेशन टू हैव वुड बी राइट वट यू कॉल दिस इज द अमाउंट ऑफ रेवन्यू आई कैन गिव यू विद दिस बजट which is profitable right and that's how i look at it if that's on the conversation to be had then i'm really concerned at least at smaller scale maybe once your business is doing profit and this is how we look at it right now business if you're doing if you're profitable then maybe we'll take that profit and invest in brand building which has doesn't need to give any return but before i wouldn't do that and you said something else i missed the question so i'm i, I was trying to understand that um, look what what did i do differently how, what do you do, you do differently yeah so in fact me and akash both were very concerned on this right and in fact we didn't invest for the longest of time right till i think we are north of 150 crores in terms of the arr we've never invested in brand building right i have looked at things very uh, binary 0 and 1 1 rupee dalo 2 rupee investment aaya right and if that you can say is brand building fine but if you going to tell me is look at this and say that this is zero brand building then i'll be like no uh, that's the thought process i've gone with uh, at least till now now when take from a business is a profitable and i believe at this point of time uh, it makes sense i will maybe make that investment where i'll say okay i don't need any revenue but that's what we've looked at it so we've not done it we've stayed very clear so if you could have seen right uh, plix never has had any major celebrity uh, till now till the longest of time in 3 years while brands one tenth the scale of us would get in like uh, actors and or even cricketers half the scale cricketers and and and, and plethora of guys right I feel it's a very risky slope. क्या होता है ना उसमें ना and here's my thought again. It's very personally. Uh, people have different outputs. What I believe is what happens is first of all you commit spending five crores on the celeb or two three crores on a celeb. Then you spend fifty lakhs on a production film. Right? You already spend three and a half crores. Your business is not that big. And then because your business is not big, you don't have money to spend on branding. Uh, anyways, right? Which is performance driven. All those budgets are not there. And then you already four crores down. And then you have to spend more money, which is without ROAS. on something where your business is burning money and that burn just keeps increasing and it's like you know when you go on a tilt in poker you say you're going to tilt right you already had a bad hand and you've committed too much even though you know you're losing then you keep deploying ki oh, maybe tomorrow it'll get better so i feel it's a very risky slope so you should be careful 
of the investments you make because once you start making investments you have to just double down on it keep till you see results and maybe you don't have that capital you don't have that don't have that long game so we didn't do it for the longest of time and i think only now if you see we've got shainaz gill on board and hopefully we'll get some more right but now business is a very different scale today so we stayed very away from it uh, because we didn't want to go down that slope once you start committing capital i think you have to keep committing more and more capital and we wanted something which is very clear like i spoke about in the past right uh, put in 1 rupee get 2 rupees <laughs> very simple <laughs> maths interesting uh, any any last message that you have rishabh for our viewers uh, anything that you think people should learn from your journey or anything that you would want to uh, tell the viewers so i think uh, what i would say is uh, if you i think building a startup or starting a d2c brand or a consumer business uh is a lot of fun it's a great space to be in uh there'll be ups and downs lows and highs you'll learn a lot but the journey is great right if you ever have uh, thoughts or second thoughts on it reach out to me i'm happy to help you guys uh always and give you the right guidance if needed but it's not it's not like something which is like uh really difficult i think right you can do it uh is what i would say you need to be focused and committed you don't want to be a super genius or a super human you can be what i always say is you can be a very average personality but as long as you're scrappy and you're committed to it uh you will find a way out and you will build a business and depending on the scale of the business is obviously different but i think it's possible and i think for me the last 3 years with all the ups and downs have been the best phase of life right i have learned everything today from like valuations to uh, talking finance to like understanding term sheets and lawyers everything right in the last 3 years and it's been a journey which is phenomenal and I think it's the best three years of my life at this point of time. So if you guys have this dream, go for it. It's really interesting. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Rishab. Uh, I I love the fact that uh, with the journey that you have had, you've been calling yourself, you know, average. That shows the humility <laughs> with which you are building this organization. Wish you all the best. Yeah. Thanks for taking out time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Swati. This was interesting conversation.